another incredibly stylish LED lamp and this one has, well, let's zoom in on this. It has a rating of 65 watts. Now, do you believe that or is the company, which is called Lie2, should it actually be called Lie to You? Because I don't think so, not in this size of package. It comes with this end cap on the end, and when you screw it into the holder and expect typical Chinese wattage rating, let's see what we get here. Oh, it's bright enough. Very, very bright cold white. Actual power rating 22 watts, which is just a mere third of what they've... Uh, Rated it at. Power factor is 0.55. Um, okay. Rotio. So a 22 watt lamp. Lovely. It, it's still a fairly high power lamp. Let's uh, get this out of the way. So I bought this on eBay and normally I have the uh, paperwork associated with it, but it was a long time ago. Couldn't find the paperwork. Now I'm looking at this. Now I'm suddenly rising at 65 watt. I could probably have found that. I shall maybe take a look after. But uh, let's open it up. And initially I'm thinking, because of the construction, the fact it's got a large flat panel of LEDs in the end here, presumably, I'm thinking it may be a, uh, one of those uh, driverless LED arrays. So let's uh, pop this cover off. I'm not seeing. It does look like it's got a driver. That's interesting. It's got lots of LEDs. How are they wired? They're wired. I can see the white wire coming up here. It's going to two LEDs, coming out of two LEDs, going to the next two LEDs. So they're wired in parallel pairs all the way around. That's going to be quite a high voltage. How many does it say? How many? It says 60 LED which means there's 30 uh, pairs, which gives a voltage about 90 volts. I'm kind of regretting putting the meter down now. I should have measured that, shouldn't I? Uh, I could measure that. Let's bring the meter back up. Let's uh, get that little bit of stuff off it. Uh, let's bring the socket back up, should I say. This is where I, I really should have my dark glasses. I don't have my dark glasses in the vicinity. Staring directly into very bright light bulbs gets very... Officially fatiguing after a while, I've completely... Oh, there they are. There, I've found them. I've found my brazing shades. So let's set this to about 200 volts range here. And I shall screw the lamp into the holder. Put on my shades, get that lamp lit up. and then try and fumble my way into the connections and see what voltage we get. Oh, this is, uh, even with the shades on, all I can see is bright dots of light in the actual light and no connections. I think I've got the connections there. Pretty close. Uh, almost dead on 100 volts. That's, that's surprising. That's a, a nice coincidence. Okay. Uh, 100 volts, I should have actually tested the current. I could test the current by shorting one of these LEDs out. Let's say I test the current through them by setting this to, well, let's be generous. Let's put it right up at the 20 amp DC setting. And I'll just short one random LED out and we'll see what we get. So that's shorted a pair out and it's showing 190 milliamps. Okay. Put this back from the current setting, as one does. It's always a good idea. So let's see what sort of power supply this has got. I'm kind of impressed so far. Put that to my favourite setting as well. Continuity, it's the one I almost always end up using. Construction. It's got this heatsink fin section. This is one of these lamps that it seems so wasteful because when you when it eventually fails, and it, you know, we just kind of know already that these LEDs will fail inside of them. Having said that, the power rating isn't unreasonable for the large area of the heat sink, and the 100 and, well, that was 190 milliamps. That's about 100 milliamps per chip, but which you know is not really overdriving these LEDs. That's interesting. Does it actually say the rating? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's just because the diameter of the circuit board, type of LED, and the number of LED. Okay, so let's uh, get the back off and see what's inside it. That must mean there is a driver in the back. I wonder if it's just a bit of a, a circuit board with heat shrink sleeving around it, as it often is. I could brighten this up. I could completely ruin everything by 
over brightening it. I've probably ruined everything by over brightening, but anyway, it's done now. Oh, it's actually a full circuit board. I do like this housing. This is a, I was going to say, it, it's a machined. It does look like an extrusion, but it's textured. And it looks as though they've sliced and then maybe machined afterwards. Maybe they've rounded the edges off so it's less sharp, which is reasonable enough. And then they've put it onto this, which is a machined dish. I think that would be machined. I don't think it would be... I don't think it would be a spun uh, disc. I think it would be machined out of that. Not really sure. And that's... Uh, the circuit board is held on by these one, two, three screws, which go through this dish and into this heatsink assembly it's got the three connect, uh, three uh, posts for the screws here and then it matches with the three holes here so this is glued in it's got the let's say it's short that capacitor out first yeah that, that's it dead let's see if we can get that out well that wasn't too hard so we've got the mains come in there is a 400 volt 10 microfarad capacitor there is the ubiquitous little chip. Now, I'm seeing an extra little capacitor here, so it's not one of the bright, powery type chips. It might be. It might just be a different version for the higher current loads. It's got a bit direct fire, the smoothing capacitor, the dedicated chip. It's got probably this uh, little capacitor here is the bootstrap capacitor for powering this. I would guess that it will have two. I'm completely wrong. It's it's actually... That's, uh, that's worth mentioning. This is a choke. It's an inductor, it's not a transformer, so that those LEDs in the front are effectively live at mains voltage, the reference to the mains. So that means, let's uh, get the magnifier in. Let's see if we can read the number off this. Let's uh, turn it up the right way. That's going to help. Not immediately recognising this, 9504SB. Hold on, let's get that. Let's get the bigger magnifier in. Sorry, I know I'm not showing you what I'm seeing here, but uh, yeah, 9504SB. I'm not sure if you're actually going to see that if I do this. Probably not. But anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to look up that data sheet for that now, if I can find it, and we'll see what sort of circuitry it's using. Uh, I'll also see if I can find the original uh, listing on eBay for this. So I found a similar listing for that lamp, and it was actually, it's sold as E27 photo Photography Studio, photo, oh, let's try that again. E27 Photography Photo 65 Watt 5500K LED light bulb, just loads of search terms, but it's clearly aimed at the sort of photography side of things, which is unusual. And like the photography side, they're just lying about the power of the lamp again. Uh, in this case, it's not that hugely expensive. It's just over about $10. This particular seller, which I, I didn't necessarily get the lamp from, Julie Temat 2. Hmm. But uh, it remains to be seen whether it's uh, actually, you know, the circuitry. I, I'm not sure how hot this gets. I should have tried that. I've just tipped all the screws everywhere. It's certainly not going to get too hot at the 20 watts. Now, I drew a complete blank on the chip. However... It's got the same components of layout as, and not necessarily the same pinout, but as a BP2833D, which is the bright power type chip. The original was a 9504SB. I just drew a blank in that. I found, well, when I actually searched for that, this is what came up. It was the bright power chip that came up. I wonder if it's just a uh, sort of similar sort of functionality. But um, if you look at the circuit board, here is a picture of the circuit board. It's not the real circuit board. It looks very photorealistic, but it is not the real thing. We can see that the circuitry follows the exact same set of topology. We've got the bridge rectifier here where the mains comes in. We've got the smoothing capacitor there. We've got the power supply for the chip. Now, the power supply for the chip, let me bring that uh, doodle back in. Bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, the power supply for the chip is formed from this resistor here. Uh, charging this capacitor from the positive rail and it sort of just acts as a current limited supply and they've got two resistors in series here 434, 43 and 40 is 430k uh, which uh, they've got two in series so that's 860k total so the best part of a mega. Now here's an interesting thing 
When you try running something like this lamp on a 110 volt supply or 120 volt supply, although it may be that the uh, L, by the time the capacitor is charged up to the peak mains voltage, you'd think it could theoretically drive all those LEDs no problem. The main problem here, I actually think, is down to these resistors here. Technically speaking, and I've not tried this, you could bridge one of these resistors out if you wanted to operate this in 120 volts, and that would then provide it this, this required current for operation, because it may be that uh, the only thing that stops it working on 120 volts is the fact that the chip's own power supply here uh, has these current limiting resistors, and they're just, because they're set for 240 volts, it's getting half the current that it would require uh, to operate on the 120 volts. So maybe just bridging one of these resistors, that's, you've got two in series here, maybe just bridging them out would actually uh, allow that circuit to operate. <laughs> Moving on, we've got another resistor here, 513. 5130's 551K. I'm guessing that's going to be the resistor for the overvoltage protect, and that's designed to protect when an overvoltage situation occurs or when you've got open circuit LEDs or, well, other stuff goes wrong. It's basically a little bit of protection. Now, while I've got this in here, I'll also point out the you've got the current flowing through the circuit uh, and it goes through the LEDs, through the inductor, and then it goes into the drain uh, of the integrated circuit and then it comes out the current sense to the zero volt rail and by measuring the voltage across this resistor it can determine how much current's flowing. That will be what these two resistors are here. You've got two low value resistors in parallel and it's pretty obvious from the circuitry that the positive will be going um, through the LEDs, through the inductor, through the chip here, these two pins of the chip, that'll be the drain, and then the current sense output going down to the zero volt rail here through these resistors, 1R50 and 2R40, so that's 1.5 ohms and 2.4 ohms in parallel to make up a sort of precise value. So really, the only other thing here at the other side is a 154, that's 1540's 150k resistor across the output, possibly just to make it stable, possibly just to make sure that when you turn it off it doesn't just dim out slowly, but it discharges this capacitor quite quickly. Uh, and other than that, the smoothing capacitor for the LEDs, the diode here, let me just show you those on the drawing again. So that's this diode here, that's that smoothing capacitor here, the LED string which is actually on the uh, LED panel, and that is basically it. And when, what actually happens here is that when the circuit's running, the MOSFET conducts, but the current flows through the LEDs, but because the inductor doesn't have a magnetic field built up in it yet, it resists the flow of current. So the current flows through the inductor, and once it reaches a certain threshold, uh, sensed by this resistor, the MOSFET turns off, and the uh, magnetic field in here collapses, and because there's a diode here, and because of the polarity, it then drives the LEDs through that diode as well. So it operates in both parts of the cycle. It's very, very clever, very efficient. Um, and that's fundamentally it. So it's one of these uh, classic situations. They have sold this grossly overrated, saying it's, you know, 65 watts. It's actually about 20 watts. But other than that, the circuitry is quite nice, and it's actually not running the LEDs too hard. It does say in the listing that it's kind of almost hints at being continuously rated, which is quite good. Because um, I guess maybe there are photography lights like this that they just, they're only designed for short-term use, but that's always a bit of a disaster because you always end up leaving them on too long accidentally. And while the temptation would be there to pull the cover off this to actually get more light out of it, because the diffusers tend to spread the light out, but they tend to, dif well, diffuse the light basically and reduce it, you'd have to keep in mind that the circuit board is referenced directly to the mains. And it's another of these products that, you know, although it's not directly electrically aligned with the metal case, I'd allow for the fact that, you know, things like the power supply might drop down. Oop, might drop if the glue came on stuck, the circuit board could drop down into this metal housing. Uh, and likewise, uh, I've seen some instances where the LEDs have failed and they've burnt and they've actually burnt a hole through the fiberglass to the, the metal underneath. And this I can see from here, it is an aluminium core circuit board. So just uh, as always, these things just never put them in while the power's on. It's always a good idea, not unless you're on an insulated surface and not touching anything else. But these are all random variables. But it's an interesting lamp. It's very stylish. It looks quite neat. And the circuitry is pretty much textbook. So 
all I know, it's quite an interesting lamp. <laughs>